Navigating Emotional Pain, a Gender Perspective. Welcome. As indicated by our title, we are delving into a complex topic today that may elicit some uncomfortable reactions. I won't lie, it's a challenging topic for me too. But remember, what we're about to discuss, as with all our episodes, isn't based on mere opinion. We are grounding our conversations in facts backed by peer-reviewed research, which you'll find cited throughout our discussions. This is an important issue, one with far-reaching and long-term societal impacts that are starting to unfold, whether we're aware of them or not. So without further ado, let's dive right in. In the intricate tapestry of life, human emotions are pivotal. They are the threads that weave together our collective human experience. Pain, be it emotional, psychological, or physical, is one such emotion. It provokes a variety of responses that often expose overlooked or hidden aspects of our character. When observing the reactions of individuals coping with pain, it's not uncommon to note hostility, negativity, or heightened sensitivity. These reactions, rather than being arbitrary, are usually protective mechanisms, the body's way of armoring itself against further injury. Yet, often in our interactions, we tend to focus on these external signs, perceiving them as representative of the person's character rather than expressions of their pain. It's crucial to shift this perspective, to respond to the pain beneath these manifestations rather than merely passing judgment based on them. Because beneath the shell of hostility or the cloak of negativity, there is a shared human experience of pain, an emotional equivalent that most of us can relate to if we aren't psychopaths. However, as we traverse the landscape of pain, we should acknowledge the disparities across sex lines. It's been all too often noted that men, despite bearing their share of emotional pain, often face heavy societal obstacles in expressing it. Nielsen and others, 2020. In many instances, men are socially conditioned to repress expressions of emotional pain, perceived as signs of weakness or a deviation from the normative concept of masculinity. Hammerstrom and Hensing, 2018. This is exasperated by a stark lack of truly adequate support systems, especially from women who are often the first point of contact for emotional expression within close relationships. The predicament escalates when men displaying signs of pain are not only dismissed, but demonized. Their behaviors interpreted through the lens of fear or antagonism. Paradoxically, women who resort to such actions are often praised. Their decision to abandon a male partner during emotionally challenging times perceived as strength or bravery. Expanding on this paradoxical subject, the societal narrative often frames women who leave relationships during challenging periods as demonstrating resilience or autonomy. We see examples of this all over social media, and to deny this exists is to be blind to the patterns. However, this perspective of demonstrating resilience or autonomy doesn't fully consider the nuances involved. The phenomenon can be traced back to societal and cultural narratives that reward independence and personal empowerment, often seen as an act of reclaiming one's power in an oft-perceived patriarchal society, Walker, 2017. Indeed, women taking such actions can be perceived as exercising autonomy and breaking away from a potentially harmful situation. Understanding the complexities of human relationships especially during emotionally challenging times, is crucial for fostering mutual empathy and connection. However, societal expectations and pressures can distort these realities, particularly when it involves a male partner's emotional vulnerability. Schnabel, 2020. For those who need a reminder, empathy is the ability to put yourself in another person's shoes, imagining and understanding what they are going through, something that seems shockingly lacking in our modern world. It seems that people often confuse empathy with sympathy. The two are vastly different. Navigating these emotional landscapes requires more than mere strength or bravery. It calls for a nuanced understanding and the willingness to face difficulties together. Opting to leave due to a partner's emotional struggles may not be an accurate reflection of personal strength, but rather a response to societal pressures that can unwittingly perpetuate harmful stereotypes around emotional expression in men. It's important to recognize that these stereotypes can inhibit societal progress, reinforcing the idea that it is entirely unsafe for men to express their emotions, 
and that sooner or later, expressing emotions will have negative consequences for them. Furthermore, if a man's emotional pain, displayed as some perceived aggression, especially by people who have never even witnessed what is true, actual aggression, is deemed unwelcome or unacceptable, it inadvertently reinforces the notion that emotional vulnerability is ultimately unfavorable, leading to adverse perspectives on women's emotional expressions. Society has created an emotional landmine. As a man, should you express your emotions to the objectively physically weaker sex, sooner or later they will discard you, proving that they are indeed the weaker sex both physically and mentally. A negative stereotype indeed that leads to dire consequences, such as changing laws and taking away the bodily autonomy of women. The impact of societal narratives and digital platforms further amplifies these issues, leading to collective male experiences that perceive emotional vulnerability as a risk, nay, a high risk, due to its inevitable negative repercussions. This collective experience not only discourages emotional openness, but also contributes to the outright avoidance of women, all under the now-reinforced belief that men are expendable once their emotional vulnerability ceases to align with the woman's carefully crafted social narrative. Recognizing these dynamics is key to challenging societal narratives and fostering healthier, interpersonal relationships that accommodate emotional vulnerability irrespective of sex and evolutionary or biological drives. The narrative around a woman's decision to sever ties during challenging times, often lauded as brave or empowering, may result in unforeseen emotional complexities. As time passes, as time passes, the immediate applause can give way to feelings of regret, loss, and self-reproach, particularly if the decision was more rooted in societal expectations than her personal judgment. Soled's 2020. Further, a tendency to shift blame onto the male partner for the fallout of her own decisions is a pattern that may emerge, and it's increasingly visible on various social media platforms, even though these narratives are often overlooked or, perhaps actively, suppressed. Therefore, it's crucial to encourage a culture that fosters understanding and support during such admittedly highly difficult times, recognizing the shared humanity and emotional struggle, regardless of sex. In reality, however, a woman's decision to sever ties during challenging times, often lauded as brave or empowering, may reflect more on societal expectations and pressures rather than the true nature of the woman, the individual nature. External influences, like the fear of judgment from friends or the pressure to, quote, set an example for women, end quote, may compel her to sever an extremely rare connection, causing harm to both parties involved. The ripple effect of a decision to cut ties in the face of a partner's emotional vulnerability can lead to unanticipated outcomes for the woman involved. Beyond the immediate pain of losing such a distinctive connection, she may also have to wrestle with the psychological aftermath and the intricate narratives she spins for herself. Deeper still is the knowledge that she actively selected her current path, possibly giving rise to a phenomenon known as the, quote, second choice syndrome, end quote. This refers to situations where a woman ends up with a man who wasn't her initial preference, an issue often downplayed or ignored by society, but painfully present in the lived experiences of many women, Johnson and others, 2018. Indeed, Societal pressures and expectations can significantly influence the decisions individuals make within their relationships. This influence is particularly strong in the context of gender norms and expectations, which often encourage not only men, but also women, to prioritize independence and strength, often perceived as removing oneself from emotionally challenging situations. Risman, 2018. This results in actions that are not truly reflective of a woman's feelings, but rather are a response to external pressures, no matter how much denial is involved. For instance, fear of judgment from friends or a perceived need to, quote, set an example for women, end quote, may lead to the severance of a meaningful connection. Such decisions can often result in a sense of loss for both parties, but potentially more acutely for the woman who instigates the split due to the emotional complexity involved in navigating the repercussions of her actions later in life. A woman in such a situation may be faced with the difficult dilemma of reconciling her actions and her internal feelings, creating a convoluted, denial-based narrative that can lead to regret and self-doubt. Zoled's 2020. This internal conflict 
may be further exacerbated by societal narratives that frame her decision as brave or strong, thus complicating her emotional processing and potentially leading to cognitive dissonance. Festinger, 1957. Cognitive dissonance refers to the mental discomfort or psychological stress that a person feels when they hold two or more contradictory beliefs, values, or attitudes simultaneously. This discomfort may also arise when a person performs an action that contradicts their beliefs or values, or when confronted by new information that conflicts with existing beliefs. You may be experiencing cognitive dissonance while listening to this episode, for example. The term was introduced by psychologist Leon Fessinger in 1957, and the theory is one of the most influential in psychology. According to cognitive dissonance theory, people are motivated to reduce this discomfort, and they can do so in various ways. For example, changing one or more of the conflicting beliefs. If you believe that smoking is bad for your health, but you smoke, you might change your belief about the dangers of smoking to reduce the dissonance. 2. Acquiring new information that supports the existing belief. You might seek out information that supports your current behavior or belief system, such as finding studies that show smoking is not as harmful as commonly believed. 3. Reducing the importance of the conflict. You might convince yourself that the conflicting beliefs or actions are not that significant, minimizing the importance of the conflict in your mind. 4. Avoiding conflicting information. People often avoid information or stop thinking about something that might increase dissonance. This is why I say that, again, you may be experiencing cognitive dissonance while listening to this episode. It's not exactly pleasant, is it? The concept of cognitive dissonance plays a significant role in many areas such as decision-making, problem-solving, and social attitudes. It's often used in marketing, political campaigns, and other areas where persuasion is a key element. Understanding cognitive dissonance can provide insights into why people act in ways that appear irrational or against their self-interest, or how their attitudes and beliefs can be influenced or changed. In these cases, the woman may find herself disproportionately affected by the fallout as she grapples with the loss of a meaningful relationship, the potential future forever lost by her own doing, the ever-increasing pressure of societal expectations, and the cognitive dissonance induced by the disparity between social narratives and her personal feelings. Admittedly, this episode was a heavy one that may have touched on some sensitive issues. I won't shy away from saying it was personally challenging to research and write as it brought up past traumas and some painful memories. However, it's important to remember that avoiding tough narratives only serves to perpetuate them. As we navigate through the complex dynamics of emotional pain, our approach must remain human-centric. We need to focus on the pain that is a shared aspect of our human experience, responding to it with compassion, regardless of its external manifestations and irrespective of sex or gender identity. Let's challenge the traditional norms of expressing pain and strive for understanding, support, and validation for all individuals. This is your host, Daniel Boyd, signing off. Thank you.